We've talked about multidimensional scaling in the abstract. And now let's go ahead and try this on our two synthetic data sets. So first we'll look at the Swiss roll data set and then the Aero data set. So I'm back into the Jupyter Notebook that we've been working in. I've gone back and re-executed the code for the Swiss roll. So, so there's the, the, the spiral there, and there's the 3D uh, representation of that. And now I've created an area for us to work in with uh, multidimensional scaling. So let's, let's go ahead and uh, start with that. Before you start work on this, you're going to need to add this additional line to your to your uh, notebook, so you'll have to import MDS, and then we're also going to be working with Isomap and TSNE, so you might as well go ahead and add all of those. So here's creating our model, and we're going to declare how many dimensions our new space is going to be. Now, in, in using MDS in, in this way, uh, we're, uh, we're going to be using our original data set. In fact, let's go ahead and set that up. So, so in, in using MDS in this way, and, and this is what your option is with this particular implementation, uh, we're still working in a feature space that uh, MDS is going to assume it can use to compute Euclidean distances in, but more generally, MDS will work with any distance metric that you want. All right, so we've set it up for two uh, components and, and uh, as many processors as is necessary. Let's go ahead and execute that. And while that is executing, I'm going to grab the code for uh, rendering that. Instead of plotting uh, x, we'll plot uh, y2 here, which is what, what we're computing. And uh, there we go. So there is our representation for our Swiss roll with MDS. So remember that MDS is trying to um, measure all possible distances between pairs of points. Uh, and so it's trying to construct a global model of, uh, of the entire feature space. And uh, in doing so, what it's done is it's uh, compressed the, uh, the Swiss roll down into a plane from, from the side. So you can see that, that very first edge there, and then it goes around 180 degrees, and then around another 180 degrees, and then finally that final edge is sitting over there. So, so that's not a terribly exciting uh, result. But, but again, uh, it's trying to really construct that global model. OK, so let's go ahead and try this with our Arrow data set. So I'm going to switch back up to here and re-execute our Arrow data set, convince ourselves that we have our arrows. And there's our three-dimensional arrow there. And now let's go ahead and fit this. That may take a moment. Go ahead and execute the figure there. And we'll pause here for a second. OK, that took about 30 seconds of computation time on my laptop. And here's our result. Uh, so that 1D manifold, it's getting that very nicely. And the two arrows. Uh, the, the, the arrowhead and the feathers, it's actually doing a reasonable job uh, at that. Um, you'll notice that uh, as we come into the, the, the feathers here, let's actually go back to here, as we're, as we're getting into this region here, um, so it's orange and then it becomes really red at the very end, and likewise, you're a little bit more cyan as you enter into the arrowhead, and it becomes more blue as you get to the uh, tip. So you see that, that orange, and it's pretty uniformly orange across. And then it gradually, uh, as we get to the end here, where, where the distribution is really wide, it's, it's red. So, so it's done a good job of separating the points in the right way. One thing that's really 
interesting uh, over here is that you'll notice here in this transition area, we're, we're capturing that the width of the manifold here uh, quite nicely. And those are all cyan points, which is what we want. And then those are getting closer and closer together. This is the manifold is narrowing as we uh, get closer uh, out to the, to the tip. So, so this actually has turned out to be a, a quite a nice uh, rendering of the, uh, the representation of this set of uh, data in that we're capturing several key properties here. We're capturing both the, the 1D manifold and the two 2D manifolds. And then it's also properly capturing the, the spatial uh, relationship. Things are a little bit warped, but it's properly capturing this transition of uh, 1D manifold to the beginning of the, the, the feather, and then that's opening up to the end. And then likewise, uh, in, uh, on the tip, uh, we're capturing the, the width as soon as we do the transition, and then, that, and then the width uh, reduces down as we get to the tip. So, so MDS has done a, a quite a nice job in, in this particular case. So this is MDS with Euclidean distances as inputs. And uh, now it's time to uh, look at some other distance metrics.